Certificate to Connection Profile Maps on the ASA. Let's jump in. In a previous micro nugget, we took a look at the fact that when a user connects to an ASA to build a VPN tunnel, that ASA has a big problem. And that is, okay, which connection profile do I put this user into? Now, why is that important? Well, the connection profile is going to identify things such as, how do I authenticate this user? Do I use a AAA server? Do I use the local database? What pool of address do I give him and so forth? So the very first question is, in this case, what connection profile does this user belong to? If we're using digital certificates, one of our options is to take information out of the identity certificate that's on this PC and use that to map over to a specific connection profile. In this micro nugget, we're going to take a look at exactly how to create that and carve that out. And then we'll also verify that it's working correctly. The first thing we'd like to do is verify on this machine that it does indeed have its own identity certificate. Let's make a road trip to this user machine right now. Here on the VPN software client, we have a root certificate and I have three, no less than three identity certificates. That's probably more than we need for this machine, but let's go see if there's any of those are being used in the connection entries. So we'll edit the connection entry for headquarters and we're using digital certificates for authentication and we're using the IPsec user. Now, if we wanted to look at the details of that certificate, we simply go back here and say, okay, IPsec user, let's look at the details. And it has this for the subject, it's got the Common name is IPsec-user and the organizational unit is training. So what we could do is we could tell the ASA, hey, go ahead and pull the contents from the organizational unit. If it equals training, map this incoming connection to a specific connection profile. To do that, we're going to go visit the ASA using ASDM. To create the mapping that says what contents in a certificate should map you to what connection profile is really easy. We're going to go to this location and then we're going to say, I want to add a new map. And we click on add and we'll call it our map. Just like that. And we're going to give it a priority. The lower the number, the sooner it's executed. So if you had 15 different maps and they were numbered one through 10, it would look at number one first, see if there's a match, then two and then three, and it would stop as soon as there's a match. So you want to put the maps that you want to hit first as a lower priority number. And we'll say, we want this map to go ahead and map out to IPsec RA. That's the connection profile we want to map to. Now the next problem is says, great, you'd like to map to this connection profile if what happens? And that's the bottom part right here. The mapping criteria says, okay, let's set up a condition. Let's say in the certificate, if the organizational unit equals training, then that will be a hit. And that would cause, once we apply this, which we just did, that will cause the incoming connection. If the certificate OU says training, the ASA then knows it's going to be mapped to the connection profile called IPsec-RA. And then from there, it's going to follow the rules for IPsec-RA for that connection profile. With that mapping now in place, let's go to connection entries and launch this connection. It should go through Ike phase one. We're now prompting the user for authentication, which is right here. Sometimes we call that Ike phase one and a half because Ike phase one involves negotiation of all the Ike phase one protocols, running Diffie-Hellman, and then the authentication piece. The authentication between this VPN software client and the ASA was done using digital certificates. The actual prompting for user authentication, which we joke as being called Ike phase one and a half, is often called XAuth or extended authentication, where it wants to know who the user is as well. So we'll build that connection and the tunnel is up. We can take a look at the de details for that tunnel by going to status, statistics, and here it has the virtual IP address that we were assigned. It has the IP address of the head end device and it has the route details, which looks like, looks like we have a split tunneling policy. We can also verify the details of this connection and that we use the correct connection profile by going to the command line interface or the GUI of the ASA. From the command line interface of the ASA, we could verify the details of that connection with the show command. And the details here are revealing that we have this user. He's been assigned the virtual IP address of dot .123. We're using the group policy of IPsec RA and the tunnel group, which is a fancy way of saying the connection profile of IPsec RA. And how did that happen? It happened because we set up a certificate to connection profile mapping, looking for details in the certificate that told the ASA what connection profile to go ahead and use. We can see the same information from the graphical user interface of ASDM. Inside of ASDM under monitoring, VPN, and looking at the statistics for our sessions, here we have our Ike version one remote access VPN session. If we double click on the details of it, it's gonna give us all the same information, including the 
group policy and the connection profile, which happened to be by the same name, the virtual IP address that was assigned to that user, and the global address that the user came in from, how long the tunnel has been up, and the different policies that were used. For Ike Phase 1, we have a AES-256 encryption algorithm, and they negotiated AES-128 for the Ike Phase 2 tunnel, also called the IPsec tunnel. In this micro-nugget, we've identified how the ASA can take an incoming VPN request and correctly associate that request with a specific connection profile. How? We do it through a mapping. Mapping individual elements from a certificate that's coming in to a specific connection profile, also called a tunnel group. We verified that it worked by taking a look at not only the command line interface of the ASA, but we also took a look at the ASDM through the monitor options. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.